Hi guys. It's me and Miles out here. <laughs> he's uh, he's really sick of the AC, so I try to get him out here and the other two at least once a day because they really get sick and tired of that air condition. <laughs> it's it's too much. Um, I'll be sweating like a, a pig because it's literally like 100 degrees today. Um, we are supposed to be getting some storms here, um, but uh, in the interim, I just uh, had to do the things I have to do around here, and I cannot stop sweating. So, um, yeah, it happens. It's summertime in New England, and it's very hot. Uh, so, first up, uh, I'm going to be doing a workshop. Now, the topics uh, that I do want to do that I think you would be fine, you know, that all of you would find very interesting, uh, I'm going to leave in the community tab, in the community board, where I leave, like, all my memes and announcements and stuff. So I'll be leaving um, the three that I thought you all, based on, like, what I know about all of you, you would find the most interesting for me to do a workshop on. This is something that, like, you literally, like, jump into the Zoom room uh, it's kind of, you know, I just kind of like instruct it with, with all the research and knowledge and information that I would share with you about this topic. And um, for that hour, you know, you take down the information. Um, it'll be really cheap uh, way to get some information about narcissism, um, relationships, paranormal. Uh, I think those are the three things, obviously, that I know most of you on this channel would be interested in seeing or hearing about. Um, so yeah, that's going to be coming up. Look for that this weekend. I'm going to be putting up that information and based on what you guys vote, we'll do that as like the first workshop I'm, I'm holding. The second one will be like second votes. You, you, I'm going to have you all vote in what you'd like for me to do a workshop on. So yeah. Um, okay. Having said that, this is completely off the cuff, by the way, today. Um, today was a really great day. He is back to normal again. He's acting his old old self, which is just <laughs> like you have no idea what that's like, how that's making me feel and how happy I am that he's just doing his normal things like jumping on the counter when I'm about to feed them, you know, normal mild stuff. Um, so he's definitely doing really good, you guys. Um, the construction people have to come in here tomorrow morning which he hasn't seen in a little bit. And um, that really stresses him out. So I got the apple cider vinegar on deck in case there's a problem. Um, yeah, I will put up a, a very quick video about, the, I know those of you wanted to know about cats and when they block, when they have urinary blockages, what to do, that truly works. And I will put that up. That's obviously not content I normally would put up on my channel, but. Um, I don't care. I, I want you guys to have that information. I will put that video up um, this weekend. So, yeah. He's doing really good. Thank you so much again for those of you that donated towards his surgery and his aftercare when we had to go to the emergency room. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for helping. So, this is just going to be a video like I used to do back in the day where I didn't really have a topic in mind, but I just wanted to sit with you guys and share some of the things that are on my mind and just let my mind do the talking. Um, yeah, I want to talk about, I want to talk about relationships today. Um, I am getting a, a, like, a surge of couples, um, that I'm working with right now. Um, I started doing couples probably three years ago was the first time a couple came to me and said, hey, I think you, you would be really good to work with us because you have knowledge on narcissism and also you've been in so many relationships, you, you would be able to, I know you'd be able to help. And um, I never thought I would be doing couples coaching but here I am, uh, these couples I worked with referred me to others and it kind of got around and uh, that's like a big part of my roster actually right now. Um, and there is definitely some patterns that I see when working with couples. And um, 
I want to talk about those things today. I want to I want to talk about some of the things that I'm noticing as as being things that we should talk about in particular on this channel for those of you that are here on this channel for for the reasons you're here. Um now just because I am not actively interested in being in a relationship does not mean that I don't understand wholeheartedly how healthy relationships work and unhealthy relationships. And so I want to talk a little bit more about that tonight and dive into that a little bit more tonight about what I know that maybe some of you don't or maybe some of you haven't really considered or or thought about when you're when you're considering dating out there. A lot of you are on these dating websites. You're out there trying to meet people and you don't know where to go to meet new people, quality people, people uh, that aren't of the normal type you would date, you know, um, kind of getting out of your, your, your comfort zone or even your preference, preference, what you think your preference zone is, right? And so um, one of the first things I want to talk about when it comes to choosing somebody who's right for you, um, this is a big one, you guys. Um, please don't ever, I don't care what age you are. I don't care how excited you are about this person. Okay. And some people do this thing where they're like, well, you know, we have to hurry up and, and get married. Um, it just seems like the right thing to do. Now, have there been couples do, do, is there a timeline for any couple of like when you should get married? No. But what I will say, and what I have seen quite often over and over and over again, and it's not just the couples I work with, it's people I just know in general, pe you know, friends of mine, people I, I, my own experience, you know, it's all adding up. Please don't be in a rush to get married. Don't, don't. I don't care if they seem like the best thing since life's bred in the first two years. Don't rush to get married. Okay? Because oftentimes, everybody does this. We're all putting on our best foot forward. We're all excited about each other in the beginning. And a lot of times the things that are really going on, our deep-seated issues, our biggest problems, they get brushed under the rug. And guess what? They're, they're still there. They exist. And a lot of times people don't know those things about one another. And they're, they're in that honeymoon excited stage about each other. And they go and they get married. So please just don't be in a rush to get married. Now, I'm not saying do that thing where a lot of couples, they're not getting married. They're just, they're just in, you know... They're in, they're in this like non-committed relationship. No one's interested in getting married. That's not what I'm saying. There are some people that that works for that they're not getting married again. They might have already, already been married and they're saying, I'm never doing that again. Or it's just couples that are just definitely not in a rush to get married. But if your desire in your heart is to have the relationship with somebody else, the, the commitment, the... Um, you know, the sacrament, the, the, the actual um, idea of matrimony, that's important to you. And, and as a Christian, that's very important to you. What I'm still telling you is don't be in a rush. I will come out and say this much. For those of you that saw on the internet last year, well, it would have been two years ago, I brought a certain person on the channel um, that I was dating and uh, thankfully uh, that relationship only lasted basically an entire year. It was one year. Okay. And um, hindsight is 2020. Uh, the other thing I'm going to tell you guys is that sometimes your friends and or acquaintances that might have said, oh, hey, I have somebody for you to meet. They don't really know them, you guys. You can't go by that either. Sometimes you will, you're going to meet people through people. Um, but they'll be the first person to say when they know really what went down. Wow, I, I thought I knew them and I didn't. 
So you can't go by that either. Um, this person was so not right for me on every level. And it took me a good year to recognize that and to see that, um, no, I am not going to be with a liar and I am not going to be with somebody who, um, who I could clearly see was hiding, hiding things. I, I'm not going to be with somebody like that. So, um, the minute I found that out, it was very quick. I didn't even shed a single tear about it. They were out of my life and I was moving on within like the day I could, you know, and here is why and where I know I was able to do that. It's because I was not giving my body to this person. We were not actively sleeping together, okay? And I think if I had been actively sleeping with him, uh, I wouldn't have been able to do that so quickly, make that clear cut decision that like, hey, uh, you're, you're definitely not for me. This person was just interested in being with someone, okay? And that was it. It was not about me. They just wanted to be married and they wanted someone to take care of them for the rest of their lives. That's what they wanted. And um, uh, they literally, uh, it's so pathetic uh, that they had to go back and because they didn't have any, any other place to date and they had to start dating someone uh, that was friends with their ex-wife. Yeah, I found all this out through people. Had to start dating a friend of their ex-wife and literally asked that woman to marry him within like months after I called off the engagement. And was married within that year, within that year. So, so it already been engaged to two women. I bet you he even used the wedding ring he, he, he asked me to marry him with for her. <laughs> All this to say, I did not know him. I got to know him. I, you know, in that year, figured out who he was. And he was not a person for me. So anyways, my point I'm trying to make is when you're out there and you're meeting people, do not assume at first face value of what you're seeing because a lot of people are hiding who they really are and they're gonna continue to hide that and um, they will hide it for anybody dumb enough to not see it or dumb enough not to you know, really look into who am I dating right now? Who am I with? Okay, so all this to say, do not fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Re really quality, getting to know someone, you guys, in this day and age, it takes a lot of time. And I'm talking a lot of time. So even if like you think they're so awesome and maybe they are, and maybe in time you're gonna see that there, there's been consistency there. They haven't let you down. They haven't lied straight to your face and thought that you were dumb enough to believe it. And then gaslight, uh, gaslight you on the lies. So if they're doing all that, you know, and if, if, if you can hold out and not sleep with people, you're going to see that you're gonna be able to make really clear cut decisions you know, and I don't know, you know, that might not be for everybody, but here where I have learned that God's rules matter more than the ones I tried to make for myself that clearly don't, don't work. When I realized that God's rules were written for a reason, they were made for a reason. Um, and I followed them. That's when I made the, the best decisions and the smartest decisions in my life. So yeah, don't be so quick to get excited about someone and go during that time you're excited. Decide to marry someone when you've already had the problems come to the surface. You've already seen how they react to when you catch them in a lie and then they try to gaslight you and you're not having it. Oh, you, you, are, you already had enough conflict to see how they, how they react to that. Do they fix the problems or do they make them worse? That's when you decide if this person is the person to walk forward with and hand in matrimony. All right. Now, the other thing we should talk about in regards to relationships and whether or not you know that you want to pursue a relationship with someone or that that somebody should be someone you should be pursuing a relationship with. People wear masks, you guys. People wear masks. 
and people will oftentimes pretend to share in the same morals, values, standards that you do. Um, you have to test those morals, values, and standards on your partner, again, before you would ever make a solid commitment to this person. Um, you have to test, you know, uh, trust but verify. That is just a saying that you have to take in today's day and age. You know, people can tell you whatever you want to hear. They can tell you anything you want, but what do they actually go out there and do? And that's what you have to test with. It's what they do. It's not what they say. It's what they do. You know, and so a lot of times you get swept off your feet by their cards and their 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 love notes and their words and you know all this and that. Uh, you're so you know the you're so beautiful and and that feels nice to hear, right? But what are they doing? What are they actually doing? You know, that's what you gotta find out. Uh, do you really share in the same morals, values, standards? You know, that's what you gotta find out. Now, some people. Some people have been so severely hurt in their past and been so disappointed by everybody they're with that in, a, in all actuality, they're just waiting for the ball to drop. They're looking for things. They're, they're, they're awaiting the worst case scenario of the worst. Now that can happen too. So you have to make sure you check in with yourself that you're not doing that. You know, um, you're not blaming past partner's mistakes on your new partner. You know, that's another thing you always need to check in. Like, how much of this am I making up in my head and how much of this is actually true, right? Um, so yeah, there is that too, that a lot of times I do see in couples coaching um, that, you know, we tend to carry things that have happened to us in our past into our new relationship and we need to not do that. We need to learn how to not do that. That's another thing I see very common in, with couples. Um, I can tell you guys this, having done this for as long as I have and having been a coach now for 18 plus years um, and working with so many people in, in my lifetime, um, I always can tell, I, I, I think I can anyway, pretty, pretty close, um, you know, pretty much in the beginning, I can tell who's gonna make it and who's not. And the, and the way I can tell that is based on a few things. One is, is a couple's chemistry. Now, a couple might not look right on paper, but when they get together, you can see that they have this thing that's going on for them and you can see it. Um, there's no words for it. It's like, it's science, it's chemistry. There's, there's something between those two that they have for each other that they don't have for anybody else. And it's interesting to watch that dynamic. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's literally the level of respect that still exists between that relationship. If the respect has gone so far down the tubes that they don't have for one another, it's really stinking hard to get respect back once it is lost in a relationship. But I feel like um, in some cases, if the, the willingness and readiness is there between the couple to, to, to fix the disrespect, fix the problems, make things better, the willingness to wanna make things better for each other is like the, the kicker. That's what's gonna make a couple last. Um, they wanna honor their, their spouse or their partner they want to make they're, they're looking they wake up every day seeking to make their partner's life easier and better that's literally what's going to make that relationship thrive and be something that you know uh you never thought attainable when your partner wants a better life for you and you want a better life for your partner um you're not thinking about all the things the mistakes that were made you're, you move past that perhaps with sessions and, and counseling and uh, coaching sessions and so on and so forth. You've moved past that. You're not holding that over each other's head anymore. And now you've moved, now that you've moved past it, you're, you really do are, you really are seeking 
a good life for that person and you, you, you're proud to, to give that, to give your partner a good life. That's another thing I see that really makes a difference. And then, you know, it really boils down to, have you really put down your past? Have you absolutely gotten rid of the demons that haunt you from your past? Because if they still exist for you, they exist as well for your relationship and they will wreak havoc on that relationship. If you have not completely dived in through coaching, through sessions, through counseling, to see, to make sure, have I buried my demons? Are they gone? Have they found somebody else to torment and torture? Are they away from me and my relationship? You have to make sure. You know, I just told um, a client of mine today, and I really mean this, I believe also from everything I've seen in my life, that every single person should do something like this, where they're doing some intensive sessions with somebody experienced that knows how to work with couples, knows how to work with you as an individual, most importantly. Because most imp uh, really good coaches, counselors, they are gonna meet with you both individually and then they come together. That is how it should be done in my experience and everything that I have learned, yeah. So, you know, I, I say that everybody should do this at least once in their lifetime, go through some major um, intensive sessions with someone, diving into your past, making sure there's no skeletons in your closet, making sure everything's come out, making sure you have talked about how you were raised, what has happened in your lifetime. I think, when we get into our 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, this is when I'm seeing that people that have buried some of this stuff for that many decades, it will come out, you guys. It's gonna come out in some way, shape, or form. It's gonna rear its ugly head. So you have to make sure that you're tackling those things uh, and that you, know, you make sure you, you've gone through it all. You've talked to somebody that you trust, that you think can help you get past it, get it out of your system, get through it, you know? Um, some people out there that are doing this as a profession, as coaches and therapists are better than others. And that is another thing that I know. So if you feel as though you're really not getting anywhere with someone, you're not really clicking, you don't see any of the progress, it's time to think about maybe moving along and finding somebody else. You will know when you have found a good coach or a good therapist because you will be actually excited for the appointment, excited to do the homework they've given you, excited for more results, and excited for the changes you've already seen that you know more are coming. And that's how you know. Um, it's a positive experience, even though sometimes it's, it gets really icky and it, very uncomfortable, but you know you're gonna get over that hump and you're gonna get to the other side of you. And my whole, uh, my whole purpose when I work with people is I'm trying to get you to check in with you. I want you to find you, whether you need to find him or her all over again, but I want you to be able to check in with you so that this, the d decisions you're about to make from here on out, you're proud of because you know, hey, I've done a lot of work to get to this point, to get to this place in my life, and I know that I'm operating from a place that I, I can be 100% certain of, proud of, because I've done the development, I've done the growth, I've done the work, and I, and I know what I'm talking about here for my future. Well, I hope this makes sense. Um, me and Mr. Miles here are gonna go get dinner ready for him and the cats, um, his feral friends, Maisie and Maverick. Um, I hope this video made sense to you. I hope that if um, perhaps you're in a, a situation like me, where you're not interested in dating right now, I want you to know that that's okay, too. Um, I think, honestly, everybody should have a little phase that they're alone, um, a time in their life that they're alone for a while. I think, I know from my experience and my standpoint, that really works uh, because you get to really know yourself. You get to find out what you're really uncomfortable about, what you really love and what you enjoy. You're checking in with yourself. and. I feel as though if you, if you can be alone and deal with yourself, 
um, and like yourself, then you're, you're going to tend to attract somebody that likes you too, because you're already confident with who you are, what you like, what you don't like, so on and so forth. And I feel like if you don't take that time to be alone and figure all those things out, I mean, how are you going to figure that out with somebody else? You should know that inside and out about you. Um, and so I'm a big advocate for that. Okay. Um, yeah. And, um, but it's okay if you don't have a desire to date right now or to be in a relationship. I'm right with you guys that are in that boat and I know that that's healthy and I know that that's okay. Um, those people were written about in the Bible, the people that were alone. Um, and God puts people alone a lot of times for a season or even for a lifetime for different reasons. I mean, look at priests, priests and nuns, um, the good ones anyway. Uh, they felt a calling to God and they didn't feel no calling to have a partner. So there's nothing wrong with you if you're in that same boat as I particularly am right now. However, I do very strongly believe in relationships still wholeheartedly. I do believe in love. Yes, I do. And I do know, I, I, I know that relationships can and will last when there is mutual respect, there is um, change, because everybody changes, right? You will change in the, in the course of your relationship. Um, there's the acceptance of the change from your, yourself and your partner. And, um, you know, there's, there's, there's this need and want and desire for growth and development and bettering yourself and reaching goals. Because I think every couple needs to have goals too, right? Um, you know, it, you can't let things get stagnant. Um, you gotta, you gotta have some things set up for you guys to do and ways that you want to grow together. Well, anyway, I hope I made sense. I'm Trace Face, and as always, it's time that we all face the truth together.